everyone, it's Amy. I'm one of the case managers and I'm here to talk to you about care plan basics. Very exciting. All of our patients have a copy of their care plan in the colored binder in their home. This might look familiar to you. Um, sometimes it can be daunting to read. So I thought I'd break it down into different sections and we can go over it. I created this little grid so that you can see it a little more clearly. At the top of your care plan, it'll say Home Health Certification and Care Plan. And you'll see that there are numbers to each section. Those numbers correlate on the different pages of your care plan so that you know what to expect in what section. So for instance, at the very top of the page and the subsequent pages, there is one, the patient's HI claim number, two, the start of care date, the three, the certification period, which is very, very important. You want to make sure that you are following the care plan within the right uh, time period. So make sure that you're checking that. Um, number four is the medical record number. Number five is the provider number. Number six is the patient's name, address, and phone number. Number seven is the provider. That's a Lume Home Care, and it has our address, our phone number, and our fax number, which are very helpful when you're talking to the doctor. Underneath that, we have lines eight through 13. This will give you number eight, the date of birth for the patient, number nine, whether your patient is a male or a female, 10 lists the medications. This is only the beginning of the medication list because usually our patients have more than one or two meds, so they continue on to the next page. 11, 12, and 13 are the diagnoses that are significant for your patient. Uh, 11 is the primary diagnosis. Number 12 is the surgical procedures. And 13 is other pertinent diagnoses. Next, we go to lines 14 through 20. 14 is the DME and supplies, which usually runs pretty long for our complex patients, so that will definitely run on to the other pages of your care plan. 15 is safety measures. Again, this part will be very lengthy and will need to go on to the other pages of your, your care plan. 16 is the nutrition. It starts here and continues on. 17 are the allergies. Very important to have on the first page. 16, we talked about 18A is the functional limitations. I just made a small example here of some of the things that you will find, but there are more options on the real care plan. And I just gave examples of whether your patient has an amputation, bowel and bladder incontinence, any contractures or any hearing problems. Across from 18A is 18B, activities permitted. This is what your patient can do or is allowed to do, prescribed by the doctor whether they're on complete bed rest, bed rest with bathroom privileges, up as tolerated, transfer bed to chair, exercise prescribed. Exercise is prescribed is extremely important because most of our patients have physical therapy and exercises to do at home. In this list on the care plan, you will also notice that they have um, lists of things that the patient needs such as wheelchair, cane, Hoyer lift, and etc. Number 19 is the mental status. I only just I just put a few examples here oriented comatose and it goes on you know from one to eight. Eight is other and here is where the case managers can write in things that are not necessarily listed on the normal care plan. Uh, for instance here this person is alert and they're developmentally delayed. Very important to know about your patient. Underneath mental status is the prognosis. We want to know what is the prognosis for our patient. Is it poor, guarded, fair, good, or excellent for our stated goals? So most of our patients you'll see a fair or good markdown. Line 21 goes into the orders and disciplines for treatments. This is where you will find the order for the skilled nursing. Uh, for instance, the one week nine for RN assessment with three PRN visits for change of status. Um, the case manager will come out and see your patient once a week and do an assessment along with a supervisory visit. Underneath that, you'll see the code status of the patient. You'll see that the primary caregiver will assume care when staff is not available. Very important to list. 
And then it goes on to talk about which doctors that we can take orders from and vital signs and so on. Line 22, this is talking about our goals. What are our goals or rehab potential for our patient? It also talks about discharge planning. Um, most of our patients are stay on service with us for a pretty significant amount of time. Lines 23 through 28 are at the bottom of your care plan. And 23 on the first page is your nurse signature, the date that we received the care plan signed, the physician's name and address that is in charge of signing for all these orders that we have written. And then of course 26 is certifying that the patient requires home care, very important. And then at the very bottom will be the attending signature and date signed. 28 talks about federal laws that we must follow. Now these lines 20 through through 28 do change. Um, for some reason, the next few pages, the numbers are not 23 through 28. I believe they're nine through something. So let's see. Every page has lines one through seven. At the top of every page of your care plan, you will see a patient claim number, a start of care date, the cert period, the re medical record number, provided number, patient's name and address and phone number, and the provider's name. Numbers on the subsequent pages correlate with numbers on the first page. I kind of mentioned that before. So with the exception of the lower portion of the form, which I told you for some reason goes from 23 to like nine. So on your subsequent pages, you will see that number 14 is the DME and supplies, which is the same as it was on the first page. So as you follow through, all this information in these sections will correlate with the number stated on the first page. Here's the lower portion of the care plan. It now becomes nine through 12. That you'll see the signature of the physician, the date it was signed, and then the nurse that wrote the care plan and the date that she or he wrote it. The last two pages, the goals will continue and you will find a really nice summary and narrative that tells you all about your patient. Um, the summaries are usually either an admission summary, a 60-day summary, which is the research for the patient so that we can continue on giving them care, and also a resumption in case they were in the hospital and they needed to come out and we needed to tell them a story about why they were in the hospital and all the changes in the orders. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions or you're unsure, call your case manager because it's very important that you understand what the patient's orders are and what the care plan should be for that patient. Thanks so much.